Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Said to them, 
Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you should always do as I have done to you. Verily, truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I'm with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. A blessed Maundy Thursday evening to you. As we began the homily portion of our time together this evening, I'd like to tell you a story. Uh, this is one of my favorite stories of our community, and it's a story about Grant Bass. And Grant is now 11, and when Grant was six years old, he became sick and he had to go to the hospital. And so he and his family had been already sharing a prayer practice that his mother Lauren called the good and the hard prayer. And so when I went to see Grant, I asked him if he would like to do the good and the hard prayer. And he, a uh, big smile broke out on his face and he gave me a vigorous nod. Yes, yes, he wanted to do that. So, so we started and, um, and I asked him to look back over this time of when he had arrived, beginning when he had arrived in the hospital, and thinking about what was something good that had happened since he came into the hospital. What was something good? So he scrunched up his eyes and thought really hard, and um, and he nodded, yes, he had it. And I said, okay, let's. Uh, uh, we'd love to hear what is what is the good thing. And he said, well, it was that when he was on his way to his room, he went through another room and there was a, um, a whole group of toys that just looked so enticing and video games. And uh, the promise was that when he was better, he was going to get to go into that room and play the video games and play with the toys. And, and he was very glad about that. And that was the good. Uh, so uh, then I asked him, okay, let's now go into the other part of the good and bad prayer. So the good and the hard prayer. And so I asked him to think about what was, what was hard since he had come into the hospital. And again, he scrunched up his eyes. And uh, then when he had it, he said, uh, because he was sick and because he was in the hospital, that was really scary for him. So that was what was hard. And so, together with the family, with his parents and Grant, um, we gave thanks for the good, for the room that was to be, uh, he was going to play in soon, uh, and we asked for help from God for the hard thing, for the scary thing, and, um, and put those together in, a, in the, the good and the hard prayer. Well, this good and hard prayer comes from a five-year, 500-year-old practice 
Uh, it didn't begin as the good and hard prayer. Uh, it began as what is known as the Ignatian examine. The two are very, very sim similar, however. Um, so as we look at the good and the hard prayer, it's a very simple practice and yet there are challenges with it. And uh, so we have to be intentional about it if we take it on as a prayer practice. So the challenge of naming the good is that when things are going well for us, when everything is smooth, life is just going along just fine, um, we take things for granted. We take life for granted. We take breathing for granted. Um, and we take all, all of the blessings that are all around us all the time, we take all of that for granted. And we cease to notice the goodness of life. And um, uh, so the challenge of naming the hard is a different kind of challenge because it takes courage. For many reasons, it is difficult. It may be painful to acknowledge that we have this hard thing in our heart, uh, or we want to be strong and invincible. We want to, uh, or we want to think that nothing bad is ever going to happen to us. So it becomes difficult for our ego uh, to name the hard. But here's the thing, that the very moment that we can say what it is that is bothering us, that that thing, that dreaded thing that is out there or in here, it begins to lose its power over us. The very act of naming it and owning what is hard, that becomes a prayer. And it is like we become the psalmist who cries out in the Psalms of Lamentation, Dear God, this is my pain, and please, God, help. I just need your help right now. We become like that psalmist. Um, so even though it is hard in many ways right now with coronavirus living, we have a slowly growing list, for instance, of those infected uh, within our community, those we love, or someone's father, someone's sister, and uh, so that is very difficult, very hard. And yet, at the same time, there is so much goodness around us. Spring is coming alive. The Myriad Gardens is just glorious this time of year. Uh, and then making those little connections with people, just hearing the voice of a loved one. It is so much more meaningful right now. That is worth paying attention to for us. So if we take the time to breathe in the goodness, we magnify the goodness within us, and that can give us strength. So once we have enjoyed the goodness, that's why we do it in this order, then we have the strength to own what is hard within us at this time. The tears, the distress, the anxiety, um, feeling isolated, feeling separated and apart, those kinds of things. So Monday Thursday in many ways has a lot of good that is vivid and a lot of hard that is vivid. Uh, there is a lot of good in that scene of uh, Jesus and his friends enjoying dinner together. Uh, because there's a lot of love in that room, there's a lot of enjoyment. And people uh, getting together, having a little something to eat, a little something to drink, and interacting with one another, that is all uh, very good and very nourishing for our spirits. And there's hard. Jesus knows that he's going to die soon, and what makes it worse is that one of his friends who's sitting right there at the dinner party with all the other friends, uh, that this friend uh, is going to say some things, is going to do some things that is going to help those evildoers in the plot to kill Jesus. As we prepare for this Maundy Thursday hard thing that Jesus is going to go through. Let us first remember the new commandment of love that Jesus gives us on this night and showing us actually how to love by serving others, by reaching out to others, by connecting with others that we love. And then as community, we will move into the hard thing together as those things that give us comfort, the bread, the wine, the sanctuary light, all of that begins to leave. The light will come again, but for now, 
we watch and we pray with Jesus as he prepares for the hard thing that is to come. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O Lord. We have been dead to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past and faithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and the patience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord. Our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for the, our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord. For our ways and pollution of the creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. May they hear us, for your mercy to create. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us to all your saints the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life and hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Stay with me, remain.